Okay, so while that's uh, coming up, um, yeah, it's starting the recording. Um, any questions? Any questions? Okay, so we're looking at these four areas of compatibility. So, uh, from those of you who are single, any questions? <laughs> Any questions, any fears, you know, like um, like uh, one question that I thought you might have. Okay, just correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, what if, you know, I look at these um, uh, characteristics, I mean, these uh, areas of compatibility, and then what if I hush, um, I mean, judge very harshly, and then I let go of that opportunity, you know, maybe God is sending that person uh into my life and then uh, you know anybody thinking like that <laughs> okay uh, you have a question or your anita Pasha, uh, i have a question actually you have a question okay okay go for it uh, i mean uh, i have that fear as well <laughs> mm. i mean uh, in that uh, area of compatibility in life's calling yeah i mean uh, I know I have a calling to be here in village, actually. I'm serving here in village. So I have that fear if I'll get a person who is from a city. And uh, I mean, I don't know how to react to that, how to prepare for that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the thing is to um, specifically in your case, um, let's say, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The thing is to just uh, you know you, your fear is okay. What if I don't? You know this is uh, yeah, this is your. Do you feel that okay? God is calling you to this, um, but are you very sure that God is calling you in a like to a rural kind of a setting? Uh, yes, very very. Sir. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So the thing is to pray and ask God. Okay, God. Uh, you know. You know. This is what you've called me to. So obviously, you will send across a person who will also have a similar, you know, uh, thing that uh, they will also have a similar passion, uh, a similar vision at least. Um, so, you know, let me. Um, so I just start praying towards that, and uh, and also look for those. You know, when you when you maybe when a when a proposal comes, right? You uh, you can. Uh, like uh, I'm sure there'll be a time for interaction and questions. So this this can be one of the questions, you know, where you can share saying, um, I mean, not like a, uh, you know, I share very graciously saying, okay, this is what God has called me, and I feel that this is this is something that is very big, very important in my life. And uh, what do you what do you think? Right. So uh, it's good to um, get that um, um, get that clarity. From the other person, also the other person says, "Yeah, um, uh, well, there could be things. Maybe there, there could be ways that it could be accommodated. Also, you know, let's say the person is in an urban setting, and then the person feels that, okay, can we do it this way? You know, there could be ways where can we? Can I come with you on weekends? And you know, can we do it this way? Um, I don't know if that's that's something that's uh, possible. You know, uh, so that could be, you know, one." The discussion co could go that way, saying that okay, this is an option. I also have this passion, but because of you know this season of life, uh, and uh, since we are working this way, and uh, could we do it this way? You know, could we go there on weekends? Could we go there, like do some mission kind of a trips on vacations? Can we can we do that? Right. Uh, maybe that's that's something for you to pray about and ask the Lord as well. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. One question from the married couples, like those of you who are married. Um, well, the married couples are silent. <laughs> married folks are silent. Man, married couples, married folks are silent. Um, I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> uh, but really, you know, um, if we, you know, as married, uh, I mean, it, it, when there's compatibility, it's amazing, right? It's like, uh, yeah, it's fine. 
uh, which is moving forward, a lot of progress, we're literally cruising. Um, if there's uh, in incompatibility uh, you know, in these areas, and that's areas for us to work on, right? We are in the covenant, we, have, uh, we are committed to one another, and this is an uh, area for us to work on. Right. We are works in progress is area for us to work on. Yeah. And um, yeah, that should be our uh, our posture right, towards these four areas. Okay. Okay. So we looked at uh, like some questions to consider, you know, like signs, um, signs of immaturity. Uh, is the other person preparing or is open to preparing? Uh, or is there a lack of preparation towards marriage? Are there any signs of uh, character weaknesses? Okay, so um, so don't get into a, you know, uh, we we shouldn't get into a marriage, um, uh, uh, you know, marriage covenant saying, okay, I'm, I'll I'll change the person, right? I'll change the person with my love and understanding and uh, everything. You know, once that person gets to know me, he will change. She will change. Wow, well, that's a that's a. I mean, that's a very very. Uh, I don't know. You know, that's self deception, right? We we uh, yeah. The person may change. Person may not change. But the change comes when person when that person decides to change. It's it's not like you know you and I cannot change, uh, force another person to change, right? Uh, or lasting change, a transformation comes when the person. You know, uh, decides, and then there is also you know um, the uh, the work of the Spirit, Holy Spirit in them, and then there's transformation, there's a lasting change. Right? Okay, let's look at some a few more uh, you know uh, areas or red flags to consider. Uh, signs of parental control. Okay, so it means that uh, um, are the parents uh, you know involved too much? Right? Controlling everything, every decision uh, of that person. Okay, the person says, "Okay, you know, uh, I think we'll. Uh, uh, I'd like to do this," and the person and the and the parents uh, of that potential spouse, right? Parents um, interfere and say, "Okay, no, 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 you, you cannot," or uh, "No, you should not." And and there's a lot of control happening there and the control could happen because you know that's how they have lived their lives right um, you know as parents and they brought up the child so they obviously you know why do parents do that it's because they want the best for the child right so we should consider that you know they they don't want the child to uh, um, to to undergo any pain to make any bad choices and there's a lot of involvement while we you know, while they bring up the child. So the, but the, what, what happens is that, uh, you know, as people grow, uh, parents also need to kind of let go and give that independence, right? Independence in making choices, independence in living their lives and, and not really force, not really live, you know, I should not live my life through my child, you know, um, and uh, say, okay, I, I did not get to do it when I was, uh, you know, when I was growing up. Now there, here are these options, you know, I. Since I didn't do it, now I want my child to do it. Right? I didn't become a doctor. Now I want my son or daughter to be, become a doctor. You know that's that's not correct, right? We are imposing our life upon whatever God's call might have, be for that person. You know, it could be something totally different, but we are imposing and saying, "Oh, this is how it should be." Okay. So similarly, what happens is parents uh, do not let go. Of that, or do not give that independence to their son or daughter when they move into a season where it's a different season, where it's marriage, right? Where it's um, they they are married, and all other relationships take second or comes second, um, and this takes precedent, which means that they are. A couple, and they are going to be making some choices for their lives, for their for them together as a as a, as a couple and as a family. So now, as parents, we can well parents can advise, parents can guide, of course, from their wealth of experience and having walked with God, and can give godly counsel. But it stops there. You know, I cannot enforce uh, my 
will and wishes, then I'll be interfering in the marriage. Right. So is there parental control? Okay. Uh, that's very important. So if they're going to say, no, no, my son will only do this. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. We need to, uh, you know, take note of that. Okay. So um, I'm not sure if, if that happens in every culture. You know, I, I see, you know, like Georgia, uh, Abu Bakr and uh, Lubega, uh, and also, you know, like Saxes and who else? Uh, Isaac was here a little while ago. Um, so, you know, we, we know that, uh, you know, from different uh, cultures, different nations, and maybe even within our own nation, like Zelitoli from way up north, and and all of us, you know, in, from different places. So we, uh, you know, our cultures might be different, and uh, so it may not directly apply, you know, this thing of parental control. But uh, but that's a sign to watch out for, you know. So I'm just uh, we're just looking into that. And the other thing could also be uh, parental dependence, right? Um, hey, shall we, you know, shall we go here? Uh, let me ask my parents, you know. So, uh, hey, but you know, you're you're an adult now, you, but no, I, I just want to ask my parents just in case, you know. I want to make sure that they are okay. Um, you know, that now that's again going to be a problem if there's a lot of dependence and attachment um, to the parents. Now, again. We need to honor our parents. We need to respect our parents. Just because we are married doesn't mean that we are totally cut away. Okay, but we need to understand that uh, uh, the person whom we are married to, or considering marriage, uh, considering being married to, should not be dependent on the parents for each and everything. It, you know, emotional dependence, or maybe financial dependence, or maybe you know other things. Uh, if they are going to be totally dependent for each and everything then now that's going to create a problem right that means that the person maybe is not emotionally strong enough emotionally mature to handle marriage or get into marriage okay now uh, one more okay so uh, while we are considering all this and saying okay now i need to make a decision it's uh, so we can obviously, uh, you know, I'm talking to single people, you can definitely get the counsel of parents, right? Sometimes we think, oh, what do they know, right? What do they know? They don't know about my life. Times have changed and, you know, um, but the thing is, they can give a perspective about that person. They can read, uh, you know, that person whom we are considering and then they can look at certain aspects, certain characteristics uh, of that person that we, we might totally miss out completely miss out okay completely get blindsided by either by our emotions or by you know whatever we didn't even look at it but then parents can do that or spiritual mentors you know some elders they can give that perspective maybe they meet maybe they you know uh, get to hear about you know, this is what the person is doing and then they can give a perspective so do they did they observe anything that was off did they observe anything that was uh, that could be a potential problem, right? Um, so they could do that. Okay. So you know, many times when you look at these questions, you know, it, it might seem like, hey, are we overthinking this? You know, our parents didn't their gen they didn't go through all this. Uh, but I want to remind us that you know the the society that we are living in, the times that we are living in, is is way way complex, right? And also, there's a lot of influence uh, from media that we have been exposed to that you know that generation or the two generations earlier did not have you know all that they grew up in was pretty much you know this is what the friend circle this is what is happening and that was it but now there's so much of uh, so much of so many voices you know dictating stating uh, this is how you know you, you your expectation should be Okay, like perfect bodies and perfect, uh, you know, perfect vacations and perfect pictures and perfect places, and everybody's like having that expectation. Oh, if it's if it's a marriage, it should be like this. If it's something out of it, that is not okay. So, so there's a lot of you know this kind of information um, coming at us. And so we, it's important, and, and also different kinds of definitions, you know, definition of marriage, definition of 
husband definition of how the wife should be so it's, it's important that we look into the word and not lose that biblical perspective um and uh, and and look into all these aspects and prepare oneself right for marriage so that's why we are looking into it because it's not a question of overthinking or complicating things um, but really you know looking at all these um, different aspects um, and uh, of being prepared for marriage okay okay so um so the thing is uh if, if you're a person, so the, we looked at all these red flags um, you know these signals uh, these signs to watch out for um and also you know for us to reflect you know if you're a single person to reflect and say okay what would your what would you like uh, the person that you're considering to be a spouse what would you like that person to be right um what are some qualities that you are looking for and, and prayerfully consider that you know the thing is it's it's not like uh, okay god what do you want god is looking at you say and saying you know what is on your heart right he's given you the power of choice he's put in you certain desires right it's not like if, if you you know if you like if you if you if you want to you know wear a particular type of cloth or clothes or you know if you if you want to eat a particular kind of thing you know god's not going to say okay that's not my will that's not my desire he's given you right he's given us the power of choice and also certain you know the way he's created us and designed us we have certain likes and dislikes so what are those characteristics uh, that you like in a person right um, to be your life partner so uh, it's good it's good to list that it, it, so in listing that you know you get an understanding okay um you know, is this is this something that really matters is this something that's important and maybe you know we've never thought on those lines right we've never thought okay uh, i want my life partner to be like this maybe we've never thought you know, we've, we've been thinking about all other things and uh, maybe this whole thing of marriage and everything was just in the back burner and suddenly we are studying about marriage and family in Bible college, and maybe we never even thought of those things, right? So it's good to think, okay, uh, if I want my person to be, uh, you know, a life partner, um, if I'm considering someone, you know, what are those characteristics, okay? What are those qualities? Um, question uh, number two, you know, what are my expectations of marriage? What do I expect marriage to be? Uh, I remember these questions, you know, I found it difficult to answer because it was like, um, I had never thought of it, right? So when we had, when we had, when I had my, um, uh, when I went through this marriage preparation time, uh, I found it, oh, okay, first time I'm encountering these questions, so I really had to think and, uh, okay, what is it? And really need to get in touch with myself, you know, ask myself, okay, what is it that you want? Um, okay, what are your expectations? What kind of a home and family would you like to, you know, uh, build or come home to, right? Um, being practical and realistic. Now, the thing is, when we answer these questions, we can be get very, we can get very, very idealistic. Uh, and uh, so, the thing is to be realistic. You know, um, this is how be practical. Um, okay, another question: What traits and qualities can I bring into the marriage? Very important, right? What are those traits? What are those qualities that me as a person, me as a spouse, what, what is it that I can bring okay, uh, into the marriage? So, well, I can bring stability. I can bring provision, pro, uh, provide. Um, I can bring, you know, uh, maybe joy and laughter. And I can bring understanding. I can bring patience. Uh, these are things that I've been blessed with. And, you know, to think on those lines, what can I bring into the marriage? For the benefit of my spouse not always thinking about what that person can bring into my life right to think what what can i bring into a marriage okay another question how can i help towards building my marriage and building a home um how can i how can i i help towards that okay now these are my expectations this is how i want the marriage to be this is what i i want to i have the i want the home to be Good expectations, practical expectations, real expectations, right? Fine. Now, what can I do? What is what is my contribution towards it? Right? What can I bring? Uh, how can I build uh, that or 
satisfy their expectation what can i bring okay so some of these questions it'll be good if we can take some time if you can take some time to answer okay for those of us who are married it'll be like a reflection okay now i'm married now i want uh, uh, my my marriage to be like this right um and uh, my expectation is my home my family uh, it should be in this way so what can i do what can i bring okay so those are questions that um uh, that we can answer if if for those of us who are married okay then we're looking going to look going to look at um, a, a, a very important uh, a question which is let's say you know there is a proposal that came um uh, i'm i'm you know i'm talking when i say proposal of course um, for an indian in an indian context it would make sense right um you know or maybe you know there's someone who who, who was interested and who said that they were interested in getting married and but you for whatever reason okay uh, you just said no okay so you know maybe there's a question in your mind you're saying okay i said no to that proposal i said no to that person now i didn't consider god i didn't consider any of these things and i just said no now do i have to remain single all my life you know maybe that was the person that god brought and i said no and so therefore since i said no uh do i have to remain single all my life because i said no to that person who god brought okay so in other words you know is there just one person in my life one person that god wants me to marry of course god wants me to marry one but if i miss out on that if i miss the bus <laughs> is there another bus which is coming my way that i can reach the same destination right so that's the that's the question you know so let's try and answer that okay and um, we can look at genesis 24 this uh, whole instance uh, normally you know uh, in uh, engagements and uh, and also weddings normally engagements you know when there's a formal engagement people normally share from this uh, genesis 24 about isaac and rebecca and uh, how uh, you know uh, abraham sent uh, servant to find uh, 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 an ideal bride for his for his son. So we see that, right? So let's look at uh, Genesis 24 and verses uh, one to. In, in your notes, you have that whole, uh, you know, the whole uh, uh, scripture portion there. It's in the Good News version, but uh, yeah, I just want to uh, let's let's read that. Okay. Um, now Abraham was very old, and the Lord has had blessed him in everything he did. He said to his oldest servant who was in charge of all that he had, place your hand between my thighs and make a vow. Uh, that is a, you know, a customary uh, time of, uh, you know, a, 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 what do you call a symbolic way of saying, okay, making a vow of those times. Um, so I want, to, I want you to make a vow in the name of the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not choose a wife for my son from the people here in Canaan. So, Abraham did not want any of the Canaanites um, you know, to be potential bride for his son. So he said, you may go back to the country where I was born and get a wife for my son Isaac from among my relatives. But the servant asked, what if the young woman will not leave home to come with me to this land? Shall I send your son back to the land where you came from? Abraham answered, make sure that you do not send my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, brought me from the home of my father and from the land of my relatives, and he solemnly promised me that he would give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife there for my son. If the young woman is not willing to come with you, you will be free from this promise. But you must not, under any circumstances, take my son back there. So the servant put his hand between the thighs of Abraham, his master, and made a vow to do what Abraham had asked. The servant, who was in charge of Abraham's property, took ten of his master's camels and went to the city where Nahor had lived in northern Mesopotamia. 
When he arrived, he made the camels kneel down at the well outside the city. It was late afternoon, the time when women came to get water. He prayed, Lord, God of my father, Master Abraham, give me success today and keep your promise to my master. Here I am at the well where the young women of the city will be coming to get water. I will say to one of them, please lower your jar and let me have a drink. If she says drink and I will also bring water for your camels, may she be the one that you have chosen for your servant Isaac. If this happens, I will know that you have kept your promise to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca arrived and we know, you know all that happened. Right, so so he's on this important journey, and he's uh, he's there to get a bride for or choose a bride for his master's son Isaac. Okay, so uh, if we look at verse five, you know he asks a very important question to Abraham. So he asks about you know what if he's, he asks what if we the situation is not ideal. Okay, what if, okay, I go there, you're sending me, I need to find this person, okay, I narrow down to the one, okay? But what if she does not agree? What if she does not say yes to this proposal, right? And, uh, and then can, uh, he says, you know, can I send your son back to the land so that he can find someone there, okay? Um, so Abraham says, no, don't send my son. And he says, you know, if um, uh, he, you're free from this promise, okay, if this does not happen, so that was, uh, we're looking at verse 8, right? If the young woman is not willing, okay, so if, she's, if she doesn't say yes to this proposal, you know, you're free from this promise. So they're looking at that option where it's not like, uh, well, there is this one, and if we... If that person says no for whatever reason, then that is it. That's the end of the matter, right? So there is this possibility that Rebecca could have said no. She could have said no, right? Um, uh, because why? She's a human. She's been given free will. She has the ability to make a choice, make a decision. And she has likes and dislikes, fears, expectations, all that. She could have very well said no. And there is that possibility of Rebecca saying no. Okay. But he, he knelt down, he prayed, and, uh, you know, verse 15, I think it is, so where it says that uh, before he finished speaking or finished praying, Rebecca was there and uh, says that. Uh, uh, then the whole thing, like that we have, they have that conversation, verse 17, uh, and, and we know what happens, right? So exactly like he prayed. So now, um, okay, he he wanted to, he wanted the Lord's guidance, okay? So that's the thing that we notice here. He, and in a, and we know that progressive revelation, you know, which we're studying in, um, you know, homiletics about, hermeneutics, sorry. The fact that, okay, according to what he knew, according to what his understanding uh, of God or a uh, relationship with God was, he, he said, okay, God, uh, this is how I will know that this is the girl, okay? So we don't have to use the same yardstick, okay, she'll be wearing this or he'll be wearing this, he'll be, you know, we don't have to do that, right? We have the word of God for, you know, the kind of person, Right. We have the word of God, we, which, which describes the desires of God, the will of God, etc. And we have also God's spirit to lead us, oops, um, sorry, to lead us and to, to guide us to make that choice. Okay, so we, we, uh, we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit as believers. Okay, so, um, so he does this. He says, okay, if, if, the, if the girl, um, you know, gives me water and gives the camels also water, then I will know that this is the girl, okay, and which he, which he does, okay. Now, the thing is, uh, okay, he depended on God for guidance. And the second thing is he gives the choice to the girl 
and to the family. Okay, so that is uh, something that we see here, um, uh, right? So after the introductions, said, um, he said, "Blessed be verse twenty-seven, and he said, "Blessed be the Lord God of his." of my master Abraham who was not forsaken his mercy and truth as for me being on my way the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren uh, and then she goes and she uh, informs the family and uh, verse 30 um, uh, it was 30 if you read and it came to pass when he when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrist and he heard the words of his sister Rebecca saying thus the man spoke to me and he went to the man and they, uh, you know, stood by the uh, camels and said, Come, O blessed of the Lord, why do you stand outside? And so on. So she basically, you know, is um, in, in the conversation and in the, you know, all, all those things that he had he'd given the choice for Rebecca. And he's given the choice for Rebecca's family to decide. Okay. So that is, that's the second thing that we see here. Okay. So uh, it is not as if he said, okay, I've seen the sign. This is the sign that I asked for. Um, God has led me. This is the girl. And he did not say, okay, God has promised. God has uh, this thing. So therefore, you need to agree. No matter what, you need to agree. This is the will of God. This is the promise of God. And God has guided. And so you need to, you need to agree. You know, so he did not use any kind of manipulation, spiritual manipulation, um, uh, and in any way. He did not, uh, you know, he did not use that to force them to come to a decision. Right? We see that also. He just left the choice. Right? And uh, and this was the response. You know, they said um, uh, Laban and Bethuel answered, "Since this matter comes from the Lord, it is not for us." Um, to make a decision, okay. Um, so that is their response. If you look at verse forty-nine, it says, "Now, if you intend to fulfill your responsibility toward my master and treat him fairly, please tell me. If not, say so, and I will decide what to do." Okay. So he did not impose on them because he had seen very clearly this is what had happened. He prayed, he asked God, and this is what God led. So the sign is very clear, but he yet he gave the choice to them. Okay, so these are lessons for us to learn, lessons for us to you know apply. Okay, so we know that Rebecca had to make a choice, and Rebecca made a choice. Okay, let's look at the uh, verse fifty-seven. Okay, they answered, "Let's call her and find out what she has to say." So they called Rebecca and asked, do you want to go with this man? Okay. Yes, she answered. So they let Rebecca and her old family servant go with Abraham's servant and his men. Okay. So Rebecca very clearly, she made a decision, she made a choice, and she went. Okay. So, so the question is, okay, if Rebecca had said no, despite all that, leading and guidance uh was that the end of you know end of the road for isaac okay so that's the question right is, is that the end of the road for isaac can does isaac have to remain single what do you think anyone what do you think Okay, let me ask a few people. Um, okay, Leah, Lama, what do you think? Okay, Zelitoli. Okay, no, he has a free will to choose. Okay, so Isaac has a free will, so he can choose. So, so the thing is this, you know, that no matter what, uh, you know, how we come uh, and, uh, you know, arrive at that choice. And of course, we need to be led by God. We need to, um, you know, understand all this and have the right reason for getting married and, and all, right expectation, etc. You know, uh, we need to understand that um, 
well, God will lead us, God will guide us. And it's ultimately, you know, finally we have to make a choice. The other person has to make a choice. And if we choose differently, okay, we say, okay, God, you know, I'm saying no. Maybe it was fear. Maybe it was whatever. You know, we, maybe it was a mistake. We made it. That's not the end of our life. Or that's not the end of the story, right? Well, God would lead us to another person. But the important thing is this: you know, when we make a decision, we will have to work at building a marriage. We would need to invest. We would need to do our bit. We would need to do our bit in preparing uh, and uh, you know, doing our bit in in that marriage. Okay, so even if the person, okay, even if there's, uh, let's say in this case, like um, like God led, we 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 obeyed. Uh, ideal situation, right? We are we are saying yes. The person also said yes. In such a marriage, also, one has to prepare, one has to work at it. Okay, now that's the truth, that's reality. Okay, um, the reason being this whatever we studied, you know, people are different, people come from different backgrounds, different expectations, etc. So, one has to work at making the marriage work, right? In building and making it great, one has to do that. Um, so God leads us. So the conclusion is, is that God leads us the, to the, well, he will lead us to the most suitable person. He will lead us, um, to, you know, he'll give us those options. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we pray prayerfully, we, we pray the, you know, for the heart of God, for the mind of God, and then we make a choice. And since it involves the will of two people here, right? Uh, it involves the will of two people here. So that does not mean that um, you know, God has only one person. And if you miss that, that's the end. Okay. So I know, you know, that's a school of thought, right? Uh, God has, because we, we say, you know, God has a person prepared for you. And even as you are being prepared, you know, God is preparing that person. And uh, and then many times we put ourselves under a lot of pressure. Oh man, what if this person? And what if I miss? If I if I miss out, you know, that's going to be that's going to be the end. No, that's not the end. Understand that the choice you make, you know, you, you need to work at the marriage. You know, that's the bigger picture. Okay, so making the choice is important. Definitely making the right choice. You know, leaning on God, leaning on you know all that we saw. You know getting godly counsel, very important. But the most important thing is that you need to work at or work in, uh, work at making the marriage great. Okay, that's your responsibility. Okay, then the other thing that we need to um, also understand is um, that, uh, um, that God honors our decision in marriage. So, meaning that you've come, you've uh, you know you've made a decision, and you've decided to get married, and you do so, uh, you make your vows, you make uh, to a covenant one, with one another. God honors that, right? And, and the thing is this: you know, you're going ahead, and and you are uh, you know making a covenant with, with God as witness. So God honors that, right? So, so we need to honor. Uh, our vows or our covenant that we have made in the presence of God. Okay, so it's not just about finding the right person. It's not just about being the right person. Right. It's uh, it's about uh, working daily, a day to day basis, um, and uh, in walking through the vows that we have made, and the covenant that we have made. Right. So while it's important to find, while it's important to be the right person, you know, it is important to work out or walk out the covenant, meaning practically live out the covenant that we have made uh, each and every day of our lives in marriage. Okay, so that's the bigger picture. 
right? That's the important thing. You know? That's the more important thing, I would say, right? Okay, any questions here? Any doubts here? Um, yeah, okay, Jeffina. <laughs> okay, Jeffina is right here. She put her hand. <laughs> yeah, Jeffina. You want to put it on the chat or you want to ask? Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know whether it's a doubt or a question, but I have heard about it that uh, when you go and listen to Adam and Eve, uh, he was found from Adam's womb. So he's like an appointed person. When people say to him, they used to make a story that I'm informed from his womb, I finally found my Adam. <laughs> yeah. And then they say, like, I used to think that they brought us appointed. And Adam for it. Hmm. Not much confused. I can understand what I was just thinking about it. What about that Adam and his heart? It's easy to say I'm made from my husband's home. That's an appointed one or not. Okay. Yeah. So, good question. So, uh, in the case of Adam and Eve, you know, there were no other choices. It was just Adam and Eve, right? So uh, there was no Evangeline <laughs> to consider. <laughs> so there was, you know, it, it was just Adam and Eve. Okay, so that was, uh, so it's, things were simple and that's the thing. So um, like while we while we say, you know, uh, I know in a manner of speaking, we say, okay, I found my missing rib, right? In the, in the, in, in my, in the spouse whom I married to, I found my missing rib or I find, my, you know, so thing. Uh, in a manner of speaking, we say that because it's, uh, you know, is a is the right person we found and we you know, marry. So um, we use that. Well, scripturally, uh, there's there's not much validity, you know, to that. I think we, as a manner of speaking, it's we can use it. There's nothing wrong in it. But um, but when we look at it, uh, you know, when we look at it scripturally, we see that. Well, uh, you know, we look at all these possibilities. You know, like what if what if the person did not make a choice, uh, you know, despite all, everything being right. What if the person just, you know, um, chose someone else, you know? So is that the missing rib, you know? So all these things. So, um, so uh, like, I would say, you know, yes, uh, it's fine. I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's nice when you, when you meet the right person and you make the right choice and then, I mean, you just say, you know, uh, that's, that's the missing rib I found. What was missing, you know, that person uh, fills that that place in my life, and uh, and that's that's great. Uh, but I don't think we can go beyond that. I, or we should go beyond that. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Okay. Any other question? Um, any other? Question. Um, yeah. Okay. Anita. You know, yeah. Go ahead, please. Pastor, actually, uh, many people ask me this: uh, What is the right time to uh, make that choice? Like, right age to make that choice that that person is for you, or that he is the one, or she is the one. Okay. So, what what is the right time to get married? Is that their question? Right age to get uh, married. Yeah. Or yeah, right age or right uh, right time to make that make decision of uh, that choice. I mean, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What is the thing? So, uh, I mean, we can look at it, uh, you know, several ways. You know, like we we look at these um, areas of compatibility. So spiritually, um, and also the seven areas that we looked at. You know, so to see. Uh, you know, am am I uh, developed in these areas? You know, am I able? Am I ready to handle this uh, response? Because sometimes people are not ready. They're not ready, and they have a terrible time. You know, uh, just and it it really breaks them. People are not ready. So, um, am I ready financially? Am I ready emotionally? Am I ready relationally? Am I ready? You know, uh, you know, even physically. So that's the thing. That's why we have that age. So in all these uh, uh, areas, you know, like like maybe you know, certain countries have a, a, a statutory age. Okay, beyond this age, you get legal age for marriage. 
like 21 or, or for the male and and so on so um so are we developed in all these ways right so that's the that's the thing right um but beyond that you know for a believer uh, i think it it makes sense you know is the person uh, ready is the person um uh, spiritually also is a person ready for a commitment um is a person ready for uh, for the responsibility you know, it's it's a responsibility it's a privilege it's a responsibility it's a it's a commitment so is a person ready in all these ways is a person mature uh, and ready for this so some of this readiness could be just the practical aspect of it hey do i have enough money to run a household you know it seems like um, it seems great to know we didn't have any money but we still got married but then there's a lot of stress right so, so practical thing is okay do i have a work do i have a job am i employed to take care of my bills you know, to take care of to running a household um so those kind of very practical uh, questions also to consider and say okay if i'm ready then um, then i can go ahead and do it right. thank you pastor right anita okay so sitkane is a uh, question is okay what are your views on interreligious marriage intercaste marriage from the biblical perspective the biblical by bible is very clear about interreligious in the sense you are coming from a different world view okay um so it's it when i say when you say interreligious it's it's more about okay uh, am i a believer or not a believer right uh, that's the thing right i might have been born in a different faith but am i a believer or not a believer i think that's the very important question so uh, bible is very clear uh, do not be uh, unequally yoked to a unbeliever so that's i think that covers everything right uh, so that's the thing and then when it comes to intercaste marriage uh, i think caste is a man made issue right is a man made problem uh, and uh, so the bible does not say anything about that right so so the bible gives that broad thing do not be unequally yoked to a unbeliever so if it's a believer then yes you can go ahead but we are also looking at these aspects right today compatibility on all these uh, various uh, fronts so so that is a biblical perspective as it can okay okay so uh, 10:50 we'll stop here and then we'll take a break um, and continue next class okay thank you god bless